This video is an introduction to shear design for a reinforced concrete beam. We're going to talk about things that contribute to the shear strength of reinforced concrete, and then we will do a full scale concrete beam test where it fails in shear. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a concrete lover, and I make these videos because I want to help you. I want to help build people and give you tools to help the concrete industry. Shear and reinforced concrete is kind of complicated. We're going to simplify things to make it easier for design. There's definitely more to the story than I'm telling you. Let's start out with the basics. Remember, if I had a cross section and that cross section is seeing some kind of shear, the shear stresses look like a parabola. and We can explain them by this equation. If we look at the flexural stresses, they're the highest at the top and the bottom and there's zero in the middle. Now notice where the shear stresses are high, the flexural stresses are low. Where the flexural stresses are high, the shear stresses are low. The first simply supported beam with some kind of constant load on it, this is what the shear diagram would look like. This is what the moment diagram would look like. And here we go at different places. Here's case one, that's at the very end. That's where shear is very, very high. And that's where flexure is kind of low. How did I know that? Because the moment is low. Let's look at case two in the middle here. The shear is in the middle and the moment is kind of in the middle. And this is the place where the shear is kind of high in the middle and the moment stresses are kind of high at the ends. And notice over the entirety of the cross section, if I was to add these two together, it kind of be stressed pretty much everywhere. In the middle here, in case three, my shear is very low or almost zero, and my moment again is very high. So again, case three is where we use flexure design. That's where the moment is very high. We see flexural cracking. Case two, that's where we're gonna be designing the shear in our beams. And in case one, we're gonna use something called a strut and tie model that I'm not gonna talk about in this video. In reinforced concrete beams, for our shear design, we typically focus on case two. This is what our structure would look like. I'm showing an elevation where you can see inside of it, almost like having an x-ray vision. This is our tension steel. There's a cross section. This is our compression steel. You see it there at the top. And these little lines are our stirrups. Now, at failure, it's gonna look something like this. I've kind of drawn a piece. This is talking about a crack that goes up and starts to go over. We're gonna blow this up so we can see what's kind of going on. Here are all of the complicated stresses that happen on this cross section. And this is why shear is so weird. There's a lot going on. We have our compression at the top and our tension at the bottom caused by the flexure. Then we have this V compression. This is the shear in the compression block at the top. Then we have this thing called V aggregate interlock. Along this interface, when it breaks, there'll be actually aggregates that stick out. Aggregates, that's the rocks, right, that we use inside of our concrete. And as long as we have stirrups that help keep this small, there's actually gonna be shear capacity transferred by these rocks. Then we have V dowel. That's this bar at the bottom. That's the longitudinal tension bar. There's a certain amount of shear it takes to break that bar in half. And then there's VS. That's the V from our shear stirrup. That's what it takes to break our shear stirrups. We have this S dimension. That's the spacing of the shear stirrups. And we have this L dimension. That's the length of the crack. But ultimately, we add all these together. V compression. That's the V compression block. Plus our V aggregate interlock. That's the component. That is the vertical component from that vector. We get V aggregate interlock. We have our V of our stirrup. That's V sub S. And then we have our V dowel. And we're going to assume our V dowel is equal to zero. We're going to take these two things and combine them together in something called V sub C. V from the concrete. The shear contribution from the concrete. And then we have V sub S. That's from V of our stirrups. We add both these together. That's how we get our shear capacity. And that is shear in a nutshell. Let's watch a reinforced concrete beam being loaded to failure. Notice we've got a full scale reinforced concrete beam. 
It's being loaded here from the top, and this load's being distributed in two point loads. We have a ruler that's glued to the side, and coming off, we're shooting a laser beam. That laser beam starts out at zero, at the very bottom of the ruler. What you're gonna see is the beam is gonna deflect downwards. Once it does, the ruler will move downwards and the laser will move up. Therefore, when it gets to one, that means the beam has deflected downwards by one inch. Let's check this out. I'm going to stop it right about here. Notice we see these cracks. They started out as flexural cracks and they're starting to turn over. They're getting closer and closer to the load. Let's watch that again. Now let's watch it in slow motion. The beam is just about to fail at this point. Let's look at the top. The compression block is in trouble. It's starting to explode. We have our diagonal crack and it's getting larger and larger and larger and larger. And if we could cut it right here, it would look just like that picture I drew earlier. The only things that are holding it in place are the shear stirrups, any kind of Viagra interlock, and any kind of shear being carried across that compression block. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Take care, everybody. Bye.